hope everybody out there can hear me. If not, put your hand up so that we can see. Um, I'm Andrew from Synergy, and I'm here to tell you about what we're doing in 2020, our new products, our new technologies, and uh, where we're going to be taking things in the next few months. If you have questions, uh, you're probably going to have to put them in the chat, but uh, that should be easy enough to identify. So without any uh, further ado, let me just pull up the slides and we'll start with the presentation. I'm going to disable my webcam uh, so that uh, it's nice and clear what's going on. There we are. And start the slideshow from the beginning. So uh, here we are. It's uh, 2020. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's 2020. It's been an interesting year so far in the terms of the Chinese proverb. We live in interesting times. I'm here to present the uh, April 2020 update, as it says here, what's new, what's next and what's not to like. I'm going to be talking about the products that uh, we'll be giving extra attention to this year and also about new stuff that's coming up through the year and about the new technologies that we're using, some of our own, some of other people's, that move us forward, that drive uh, the Synergy software world. So uh, to begin with, uh, let's go to uh, the schedule. This is what we're going, how we're going to be doing it. There's going to be me talking to you for a little bit, and then I'm going to show you some stuff on my desktop. So uh, to do the slides first, <clears throat> they're talking. Our key products and technologies for 2020 are current and next versions and upcoming features that will be in versions that follow yet later. To begin with, the key products for this this year come into three, uh, Capture, AirPro and Multiviewer. Uh, to begin with AirPro, it's a perennial, it's very popular, um, it's uh, legendary around the world for its reliability, uh, stability and ease of use and uh, it uh, now has been enhanced uh, with two technologies that we've listed at the bottom, SRT and Daniel2 um, and I'll be talking more about those in a second. Uh, also Synergy Capture. Synergy Capture is uh, um, something that we're very proud of right now because it's been selected by some prestige customers. The Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra uses it. Uh, the Council of uh, Europe, uh, part of the administrative structure of the European Union, uses it in their headquarters in Brussels. So every time you ever see a European politician waving and flashlights going off because he's at the Council of Europe, you're watching Synergy. And uh, best of all, any time you watch the summer game, uh, the uh, uh, baseball, uh, when indeed it comes again, if you're not watching it live, you're probably watching Synergy because Major League Baseball has 212 cap uh, channels of our capture system to capture every single game that they have. Uh, so they are doing 200 channels plus every game day, plus a couple of dozen airs and some other glue and bits and pieces and a bit of professional services that we uh, we offered them to stick it all together. And then finally, we have our Synergy Multiviewer. Uh, the Multiviewer has um, uh, just moved to version 15, literally uh, on the streets uh, right now. And in version 15, there are some uh, great new features. Um, uh, quite, uh, and I'll be showing those uh, a bit later on, but we now have the possibility to run multiple screens from one single multi-viewer instance uh, to make uh, implementations uh, very much easier. So you can have a central multi-viewer server that handles all your signals and you can put custom layouts onto different screens as uh, IP streams. Um, this is a, a very big move forward and I'll be showing that. We also have some new alarms and some other bits and pieces. So. The technologies that matter for us then uh, this year are SRT, uh, the Secure Reliable Transport of High Vision. This has uh, introduced a whole bunch of new features into our products uh, and new possibilities, not just our products, but everybody. Uh, it's, uh, I, I've been saying to people, for me, this is the biggest thing since DVB. This is, uh, or ATSC in America, um, this is a major game changer because it completely changes how contribution and distribution can be handled in the broadcast industry. Uh, it and it also works just as well outside or inside the studio, uh, depending on what you want to do. 
Daniel 2 uh, is our uh, mezzanine codec. We use that behind the scenes to, uh, to make things happen quickly. Um, it's also available uh, as a plugin for Adobe Premiere um, as a way of getting people to get to know us. The plugin is free of charge and it allows Premiere users, um, well, it's basically a, a turbo boost for, for Premiere. Um, Premiere users can edit in HD and higher resolutions at full resolution and full speed if they're working with our codec. Um, and um, they love it. I mean, we have a few hundred licenses out there now. Everybody that tries it loves it. So SRT and Daniel 2 are, are key technologies in 2020. So what are the current versions and what are the next versions? This slide has been superseded today and I'll explain why in a second. But for the first, uh, Synergy F4.14.1 uh, has just been uh, recently brought out. The dot one indicates that it's uh, pretty much a tidy up um, uh, but the new uh, whole number upgrade 15 will be coming real soon now and uh, has some very interesting uh, new possibilities that have, have come from, again, from our uh, use of SRT. So with Air 15, it's now possible to output um, IP in the form of SRT, RTP, UDP. It's possible to output NDI, it's possible to output SDI. Uh, and also have inputs uh, from all of these things. Capture also has the SRT magic um, and uh, is literally just updated, so there won't be a, a new version anytime soon, which is why the two versions are the same. Um, I'll be showing uh, what is in 14 that makes it so special, uh, but it has uh, much greater control than previously, much more flexibility than previously. And the same is also true of our convert, uh, transcoder, Convert 12. Uh, this has had a significant remodeling which has brought uh, a different user interface to it. Those of you who have seen Convert before will be aware that we had a combined monitor and client um, to uh, uh, enter jobs and to see what was going on with them. These two uh, par uh, parts have now been separated out. We have a, a client for feeding the beast with and a monitor for watching what it's doing. Um, so additionally, so the, the, the software has been expanded slightly. Uh, it also has uh, upload to uh, social media as a new feature. Um, Multiviewer, as I've, I've already mentioned it briefly, but I'll uh, mention it again, Multiviewer 15. Um, this is um, straight out. This is literally uh, just released a couple of weeks ago. Again, SRT support is uh, a major factor here. Um, now, on these four products, Air, Capture, Convert, and Multiviewer, there is a third technology, which I didn't put on the list, but is also included, and that's our shared RAM technology. With shared RAM, what happens is if you're doing uh, something with some video that's coming in, let's say uh, you're going to capture it and you're going to play it out and you're going to put it onto a multi-viewer screen. In the old way of doing things, you would move that uh, stream to wherever it needed to be and then render it in place, uh, therefore needing uh, a new set of render resources at every point in the chain. With shared RAM, that goes away. All you need to do is uh, let the first application, be it Air or capture, uh, take the, the video and process it, and then thereafter you can move that shared RAM video uh, anywhere in, in your Synergy system. This means that uh, you can have multiple video streams that are only being decoded once. This is a significant uh, relief on hardware, um, and it makes it possible to, to do more uh, with less computer than has been in the past. And I'll be showing you that when we get to the demo stage. Uh, the superseded part of the slide is that when I prepared these slides a few days ago, uh, we were on route 11 and 15 was on its way. 10 minutes before I came on air, I got the, uh, the uh, mail through to, to announce that route 15 is now available. So if you have the possibility to uh, um, pull it down and check it out, then you, you, you can now do that. The big jump in numbers has to do with the fact that uh, Root was pretty much finished as it was, um, and there wasn't much you could add to it, and then along came SRT. As a result, uh, the uh, code base has been 
rejigged to include SRT um, and it also changes what was before a very useful utility if you happen to work with RTP streams into a, a completely different beast because now you have a management tool for handling SRT and bearing that bearing in mind that SRT can handle your in-house and out-of-house streams and put them anywhere you want uh, 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 you can put them anywhere you want using Synergy Root. Archive and desktop Yes, they are still important and we still love them, but as of this year, there's probably not much going to be changing. Um, on the archive front, um, it's pretty much stable. And on the desktop front, uh, the, uh, the latest additions are uh, things like, for example, a square safe area to allow you to prepare video for uh, social media that you can then upload using Convert via job drops in desktop. But we won't be covering those today. It's just mentioning them in passing. So um, what we also have, other bundles. Now these are um, the bundles here, the Air Pro bundle. This pulls together all of our uh, broadcast playout uh, software licenses into one easy bundle. So that includes um, our playout, our graphics, uh, Dolby, DNxHD, um, all sorts of other stuff, all uh, put together into one single uh, easy to buy system. Effectively, from now on, this is going to be how you get air. The old thing days where we used to just sell the uh, engine and have all the licenses as add-ons, we're not doing so much anymore. So uh, that's this is how you'll see AirPro from now on. We also have the TV pack. Now, it costs the same as AirPro but it has a couple of limitations. The first is it's got all of those packages on it, but they all have to run on the same server. The second is that although it's got the full feature um, playout engine, the full feature capture engine, et cetera, uh, it does not support things like uh, redundancy, uh, ganging, uh, and stuff like that. It is intended as a standalone, it's intended as a studio in the box. However, uh, that said, as a studio in a box uh, with the right hardware and correctly configured, and as I say, making use of SRT, shared RAM, and um, uh, um, Daniel, uh, Daniel 2, um, it's perfectly possible to run enough of this on a single server uh, to make it worthwhile for a small operation. So it's uh, definitely worth considering, um, but it is not a, a, does not equal Air Pro, and uh, as a result, uh, if you really are in um, mission critical broadcast output situation, don't be using the TV pack. Uh, it's Air Pro that you want. And then finally, the Solo Duo Quad Set. This is uh, this is was intended as a, a simple enough op, uh, idea. Um, you have a hardware server somewhere. Uh, you can put solo on it, and then you have a single channel, which can be a playout channel or a capture channel. Uh, Duo gives you two channels, and you can have either of them as playout or capture, and four quad gives you four. These are configurable as you are using them. It's, you are not locked in to buying two of each or one of one and, and three of the other. Um, you can set it up any way you need it, any time you want it. Uh, to, to do whatever you need. Two in and two out sounds like a K2, uh, but a quad with a suitable server is considerably cheaper than a K2. In fact, it's probably cheaper than the maintenance on a K2 these days. Uh, and of course, it goes all the way up to 8K resolution, etc. So, um, Solo Duo and Quad is is a, a drop-in utility that you can use um, to for as a video server, uh, add a pop-up channel whatever you need. Um, in the case of these, again, everything will have to run on one server, no remote control, no redundancy, etc. But uh, you don't have redundancy on a video recorder, so why would you need it on a video server? So let's get into a bit more detail. The Air Pro 15 with title of bundle. Playout is now up to 8K, fully supported. Uh, almost all broadcast file formats, I say almost all because someone always comes up with something, although usually if we don't play it, it's because the file is broken, not because it's not supported. Uh, we can scale on the fly uh, and we can simulcast in lower resolutions, so HD and SD at the same time. So with the that those two things together, uh, supporting all those file formats and scaling on the fly, it means that uh, you can pretty much take any content 
that is um, in a broadcast compatible format and simply place it on our playlist and we'll take care of, of uh, playing it out. Um, I have heard that there are playout systems that require you to transcode in advance and move uh, content to, to, to play out and all that. Not necessary with us. Uh, very uh, straightforward, very flexible. SRT, uh, supported for maximum flex flexibility. This means SRT in, SRT out, and uh, as a step forward, because I know you've all been hearing about SRT for so long, you're probably tired of it. Well, we got a new wrinkle, a new wrinkle. We're actually using it internally as well. So some of our signaling inside our application is also being done now using SRT because it, it works so easily. And I'll be showing you how that works in a little bit. Um, the full branding, branding solution and playlist editor are included as a matter of course, as is also our CG uh, graphics trigger that allows you to uh, drop dra graphics into a, uh, a running playout stream. NDI in and out support is there. New features. DTMF. Um, this is something that, that for a long time we resisted. Um, because we didn't see the need of it because there are digital solutions. Um, but uh, nonetheless, DTMF support, there are still a lot of people out there using Q-tones uh, to switch, for example, to commercials. Uh, from now, you'll be able to do it straight out of Synergy Air. And then the queued item preview output. Uh, so what does this mean? Well, if you're using our playout system uh, uh, normally, you will have our playout control, which you may or may not be looking at. Uh, if you're not looking at it, then you can't see what's going on. Um, so what's been added now to Air uh, Playout is the possibility, or, or to the Air Engine, is an output of the, the queued item that's waiting to be played. This means that you can have your now playing and your next, uh, and you can output these out to a multi-viewer. So you don't need to have air control open to see what's going on. You can just have it up on as one of a couple of the screens on your multi viewer and just throw an eye on it when you need to. Um, and this is only possible because we have built S, uh, an SRT out from our queue. This is a, a very new, very cool feature. Um, and the people I've been showing it to so far have, have been uh, begging me for a release date for 15 so they can go and use it. Uh, coming soon, as in not in this version, but actively being worked on at the moment, is in-stream subtitling. Up to now, uh, we have supported and do support uh, text subtitles being output, burnt onto the screen. Um, but this is in the stream subtitles that the end user can switch on and off with their remote control. Uh, it is beginning with teletext and with DVB, so the European side of things, because that's where the impetus has come from. But closed caption is on the list, and it is not inconceivable that there will be closed caption support as well in this format by the end of the year, which will give everybody the opportunity uh, to throw away um, a box again. Now, the reason I say that. Uh, we've been offering uh, uh, the, the loudness package from Linear Acoustics now for a, a couple of years, uh, and I recently visited a customer, um, and the, the reason that they wanted to get our, that plug-in was so there was the, the, the last thing left in a rack was the audio processor. And once they took the audio processor out, they could get rid of the rack and have like a, a whole rack back. So yeah, it's a uh, it, it's, uh, very, very useful thing to be able to do. Uh, CAPT 14, again, support for almost all broadcast file formats. Um, a very simple, uh, very flexible scheduling system. You can schedule directly in the application itself or uh, via um, a centralized web setup uh, that allows you to assign uh, multiple engines to jobs and so on and so forth. Um, you can simultaneously capture into multiple containers and codecs. Uh, so you can be writing two different files at the same time, get your high res in, and also a, a low res with time code for dubbing and subtitle work. Uh, again, SRT is in there. Um, chosen, as I said, by the most demanding customers. People have bought it that could buy anything and they picked our stuff. Uh, NDI is in there. New is 8K is now uh, up and running. We were showing it already six months ago at IBC. Um, we had an end-to-end -end 8K workflow uh, with our capture, our archive, our desktop, 
um, and uh, also Adobe Premiere editing in 8K, which had a lot of people very surprised, thanks to the Daniel 2 codec. Uh, more wrappers and codecs have been added, particularly at the high end, to, to cover the, the higher resolutions. We can now write directly to an Avid fi uh, uh, file structure, uh, that is to say all the different files in the correct places, so it can basically capture straight into uh, a share that an Avid, Avid person can use and they can just pull it straight out and start working with it. And we also, for the larger setups, um, or even for the smaller ones when it comes to that, have added in our telemetry. Uh, telemetry, um, some people may already be, already be aware that we've been offering telemetry as an output from MultiViewer now uh, for a couple of years. Uh, how this works is that um, we will send uh, um, data points to our uh, um, cluster, search cluster that we have, and in that cluster we will then map those data points for you against time, so that you can have on, on your screen at any given point, you can cap capture um, all the performance data out of your system since you've started capturing it. How did we do last month? How have we done over the last three months, etc, etc, etc. MultiViewer supports it, um, and uh, uh, now Capture also supports it to allow you to have a, an overview for management on how you're doing, how you're performing. Uh, then, uh, Convert. Um, so, Convert has now been, um, uh, has, as I said, the, the, the client has been added up, uh, the client has been split up into two pieces. Uh, what does Convert do is uh, it allows you to set up a farm of uh, transcoding engines or agents. Uh, you can put these onto one big server or farm them around a bunch of smaller servers. And uh, you simply make the jobs available either by hand, by using the interface to open a job, or by using a drop folder. Uh, it also, of course, integrates directly into our desktop and uh, archive uh, products. Um, it works on a template basis, so you can simply build templates for exactly the combination of codec, wrapper, bitrate, etc. that you need. Um, and as I've already mentioned there, now the new features are a dedicated client, 8K support, social media support. Um, there will be a restructure in coming versions that will allow make it make uh, setting up a render fa uh, farm or a transcode farm easier uh, by uh, changing the way we handle licenses to allow uh, um, e licenses to be more easily served from different machines to a central point. The multiviewer, best a uh, year ago, you know, around about this time a year ago, we walked away with the prize from NAB for the best software product. Um, and so our multiviewer, uh, no upper limit on the number of channels that you can display. Uh, if you need to display hundreds of uh, multi uh, hundreds of channels, then build yourself a multiviewer cluster uh, based around uh, multiple machines, output to a compositing multiviewer, and uh, you can then um, have hundreds and hundreds of channels. Uh, with those channels can be SDI, NDI, RTP, UDP, SRT. Uh, or shared RAM. Um, as I've already mentioned, by using shared RAM, it means that you can be watching exactly the video that's also being handled by your playout or your capture uh, at exactly the same time because you're looking at exactly the same video. Uh, then that you have the possibility of just a, a, an old fashioned mosaic, four by four, whatever, uh, or you can use the designer layout. Um, the designer layout allows you to have obviously the players uh, screen scaled bigger or smaller as to what's important, add clocks, etc, etc, etc. Infinitely scalable I already mentioned, capture status overlay. So if you're using um, uh, MultiViewer in an environment where you also have capture running, you can feed uh, the capture preview to the MultiViewer and then the capture status will be displayed on the MultiViewer screen. So if you have live inputs coming in and you want to be sure they're going to be recorded, then ahead of time you can see on the multiviewer that the recording is status is set is ready. Uh, and then when it's actually recording, you'll be able to see that it's recording. Um, and uh, without having to, again, just like you don't have to open air control anymore to see what's now and what's next. <coughs> Excuse me. Just so you don't have to use capture control 
to see if your recording is functioning or not, um, you will see it straight away in the multi viewer. Um, output to a screen or stream. Now, when I say output to screen, that means let's say you buy yourself a, <laughs> excuse me, a great big um, and video board with four display port outs, you've got four UHD screens on, then uh, you can make yourself a humongous Windows desktop for those four UHD screens <coughs> uh, and have um, you have four HDs at full resolution all on there and lovely. Um, or what you can also do is you can output to as a stream and it will output a standard stream as RTP, UDP, S SRT, which you can then play on your choice of uh, a device or application wherever it's needed, so that it is possible now to have your S uh, uh, SRT enabled multi viewer going across the public internet uh, and being on the wall of your house uh, if that's in any way desirable to you. New features. Um, multi layout output is uh, a tremendous new thing and, and opens up a, a whole bunch of doorways. Um, this means that you can create uh, separate uh, layouts using our layout designer, which already had layouts that you could switch between by hotkeys. What we've added now is whereas before you could use a hotkey to switch between two layouts on the same screen, now these individual layouts can be output separately. So you can have one multi viewer. Let's, for the sake of argument, you have one multi viewer with 16 channels on it. You can output four different four channel uh, windows that go to four different places and uh, much more flexibility. Um, and as I've said before, also the, the uh, possibility by using SRT to put those outputs any way you like in the world, not simply uh, in your studio. We also have added in uh, color bar and tone detection. So uh, if you're taking in a, a live contribution from a satellite, for instance, and the satellite misbehaves or the, the uplink misbehaves, you may well get uh, color bars and uh, kilohertz. And um, we can now pick that up and uh, uh, act accordingly. So, and act accordingly includes the possibility now, by the way, of uh, sending a trigger to Synergy Root uh, to switch an input. So uh, you can, in fact, now directly affect your output from MultiView, something that up to now has not been possible. Um, and SRT, I've already, I'm probably getting sick of hearing it, but it's still coming. And NDI support are now built in there as well. So um, <clears throat> new tech houses um, have been keeping us, uh, 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 have been keeping us busy, been in touch a lot because new tech themselves said, hey, these guys have an uh, NDI multi viewer. If you need one, talk to them. We already have customers out there using um, their multi viewers with NDI and are very, very happy with it. Ah, Synergy Root. So um, the idea with Synergy Root, it's easy management of IP signals. So um, you uh, normally your IP signals will come as bunches of numbers uh, separated by full stops and with a colon and a slash or two in there somewhere. And um, yeah, you might be good at remembering all that stuff. And then again, you might not. Uh, it's much nicer if you can just put all that in one time into a machine and thereafter be working directly with the name of the channel. Root will also pull in an MPTS and split out the individual signals for you. Um, and we have customers doing this who are in, in the rebroadcasting business. Um, and it will also allow you to uh, uh, output again uh, to, to work with uh, SRT, the new feature at the bottom. So once it has gone from being a simple in the studio type utility that you could use, to a uh, utility that you can use to manif manage not simply uh, your uh, streams within your studio, but also uh, contribution and distribution as well, all from one single simple interface. Um, you can you can grow it as much as you like. It's uh, at the end of the day, all Synergy Root does is uh, packet anal analysis and switching. So uh, you can handle as many signals as you want. Um, if it gets to be unwieldy, then you can have separate root servers that are linked together by our, our channel relay service. So very flexible, and as it says, easy connections throughout the broadcast chain. Finally, 
uh, archive and desktop beginning with archive it's uh, I'd say proven media management system it's been out there in constant use now for over 20 years and um, uh, as used by the BBC and a whole bunch of other people uh, it has automated storage management so that people who are in the serious media business, where you are pulling in large quantities of data, processing that data into shows, uh, outputting it, and then you have to do something with it, our automated storage management allows you to build a workflow that lets the computers do a bunch of the heavy lifting <clears throat> because the computers will handle the storage management for you completely. Simply say how long you want a piece to be online for uh, and identify when it then is going to go offline and tell our system and then when the time comes we will just do it. Uh, there are all sorts of workflows available that allow you to uh, handle large quantities of throughput uh, content, um, use it, uh, reuse it and then park it. Uh, we are directly integrated into LTOs so should you park something high res and want it back uh, it will easily be returned. In fact it will be returned user transparently uh, a user only needs to pull up an, uh, a piece of content where the high res is stored on tape, do something with it, and then export it from the archive. And when they do that, we will pull that content off tape and uh, put it in there all neat and nice for you. Uh, you can control over the content is via metadata. You can have unlimited fields, not that that's practical, but you can configure them to pretty much any kind of a field that you like. Uh, and you can also structure the metadata to uh, to match your workflow. It's all completely open. We're not putting you in a straitjacket, but giving you a set of tools. You can store everything associated with the production, or the audio and video, scripts, call sheets, graphics, posters, anything you like, uh, can all be kept together uh, and uh, um, archived together and uh, recalled as needed. And uh, the structure is designed for uh, creatively minded users who don't much care about computer administration. The user level, the users are almost completely insulated from the machinery. For they don't have any access to the hard drives. They don't have any uh, way of breaking stuff. Um, and that's all managed by our uh, enterprise manager or database manager, uh, which allows you to set very granular permissions that make sure that people have all the tools that they need to do stuff, but not tools that they need to break stuff or uh, do other people's jobs. And it's infinitely scalable. They, because we, we are, it's backed by Microsoft SQL Server, uh, which runs banks and insurance companies around the world, we're not really asking very much of it. Uh, so you can just grow and grow and grow. You can uh, have multiple databases. You can run clustered databases just like the uh, Fortune 500 companies do. Um, and you can have as much content, uh, as much media accessible through uh, the archive as, as you want. Uh, and then we have Synergy Desktop. Uh, finally, the window into Synergy Archive, as it says here, browse, edit, tag, log. Um, uh, you can um, pull to put together your program on the uh, timeline editor with additional audio. You can record your own voiceover. You can uh, add graphics eff uh, effects. We have uh, NVIDIA accelerated uh, digital effects, which can also be uh, driven from the timeline. Uh, uh, driven from a timeline, so you can have uh, uh, moving uh, effect fields or traveling blurs, that kind of stuff. Um, the timeline editor is hooked into our system in such a way that uh, as soon as your timeline is complete, uh, you simply unclick the active button and it is immediately available for playout. It can go straight to Synergy Air uh, and Synergy Air will handle all of the stitching, all of the uh, rendering, etc., etc. This makes for an extremely fast, tight production workflow. And it also means that, uh, it should be noted that any inverted comma cuts that we make uh, are not in fact cuts at all. They're simply database en entries. And the original ingested piece of footage will always remain the original in a piece of footage and uh, anything that we need we can copy and cut from it but we don't actually physically change it at all. 
we have an integrated uh, newsroom client. Um, this is, uh, was built in at the request of some customers previously, and it's still there. Uh, using Synergy Archive, Synergy Desktop, adding in our prompter and some of our air engines for uh, as video servers, uh, and you have a complete news solution. No need for MOS uh, uh, or anything like that. It has uh, your document server, your graphics server, and your video server are all uh, handled by Synergy. And you can have uh, um, a, a news workflow as simple or as complex as you like with uh, a sing from a single man operation to multiple PCRs. Uh, and it's, that's built just automatically into Synergy Archive. Finally, as I've already mentioned there, we have social media integration. Uh, Synergy Desktop has been adapted to help uh, work people work with social media content. And through the uh, connection that Convert makes uh, with social media, um, because you can simply access Convert straight from desktop, it's a simple matter to prepare your, your uh, tweet or whatever. Just drop it on a job folder. Convert will pick it up, clean it up, do what's necessary and park it uh, wherever it's needed. So uh, that's adding something that people have been asking us for for a, a long time. Ho! Oh, so that's enough talking. Um, and now it's time to have a quick look at the demos. I will be uh, starting off with Air and then Capture, MultiViewer and Root, but I will also be showing uh, how these things all hook together. So let's uh, tuck this out of the way and let's get started. We'll start with Synergy Air. I'm going to start by having a look at the Air engines. So um, open my configure tool. It's already open and pick an engine here. Configure. So, okay, so let's have a look at what's new. First thing I already mentioned, DTMF is here, uh, can be configured. And if you're using DTMF uh, as a trigger to switch for advertising, it's now uh, supported. Um, I go to playback. I'm outputting from this engine shared RAM uh, because all it's doing right now is putting something on the multi viewer. But that's what it's, it is shared RAM. In order to use shared RAM, it's a simple thing. You select it, uh, and uh, if I select it and hit change, you see the, the, the dialogue. That's shared RAM. Give it a name, tick on global namespace. Uh, so it works all the way across your network, and that's it. Finish. Boom. You now have something called Air One, which is a shared RAM output that you can use in all of your Synergy applications, and we'll be seeing seeing that coming back. Here we see support up to uh, 8K, 7680 by 4320 at 60, uh, and also in PAL for those of us on this side of the world that have to live with 10, 10, uh, 9.94 frames less per, per second. Um, then uh, also on here we have the 10 bit support, HLS. Uh, um, HS, H, uh, I can't remember. Anyway, the one that begins with H we support. Dolby is coming, I believe. Um, and um, then down here, the feedback code, codec is set to Daniel. This, <clears throat> this is a simple tweak. Uh, anybody that's out there that's already using Air or has customers that are using Air that right now, uh, one of the, the most um, uh, irksome things about uh, Air has been this. Uh, um, uh, dashboard because the dashboard actually eats CPU and resources like nobody's business. Uh, there are various ways to get around using the dashboard, um, which are kind of a lot of which are out of scope here. But for example, um, again, if you know anything about Air, you may be uh, aware that you can run Air engines as services. Um, and if you run the Air engines as services, uh, then you um, you don't need the dashboard anymore, and it uh, uses a lot less CPU. Ditto the feedback codec, the codec that pulls all the video and parks it back out to the various screens in con Air Control and elsewhere. If you set that to, to Daniel, it effectively puts it, a it puts it all in the GPU anyway, and b it does it so quick. Uh, again, it completely gets rid of all of your. Uh, uh, the, the the heavy lifting that used to be uh, associated with the feedback codec. 
Um, of course, you can also use your NVIDIA GPU, GPU uh, with H.264, but you don't gain anything by it. So just setting the feedback codec to Daniel will is, is an automatic uh, um, energy boost. So if I do nonetheless pop up now my playout dashboard, then we can have a look at what it is that I'm looking at. Uh, so we can see here the uh, uh, the videos that are running at the moment, and um, just slightly bit bigger. Now, um, what, what we're looking at here is uh, the following. The top um, at the top, we can see um, a, a concert. This is the concert from the Glastonbury Festival that turned uh, um, Mumford and Mumford into, or Mumford and Sons into a whatever they're called, into a international superstar act. Um, and in the little window, you can see the next preview item. Under that, you can see um, an RTP stream. This is a cap, a satellite cap. Um, and underneath that as well, you keep seeing black frames because they're in loops. The, whenever the loop restarts, you get a black frame. Uh, that's because of the poor quality capturing that I did. So uh, the crucial thing to note here on these uh, playouts uh, is the field dead in the center of the screen, the one that says CPU. Because as you can see, we're not hardly using any CPU at all. Uh, I have been in the past in tuning situations where the CPU was like 70, 80 percent, and we were looking around for things to try and bring it down to make stuff work better. CPU is almost negligible. As you can see, and the um, the top stream is, uh, all of these streams, I'm sorry, all of these streams are um, HD streams, and yet they are using almost no CPU at all because of, of offload uh, and uh, low cunning on the part of our uh, software gnomes. So, uh, so if I go back here and go to general, I have this box ticked. Anybody that's done our trainings um, will hit, uh, uh, with me will know that when I train people on Synergy Air, I say, never tick that box. Uh, the reason you should never tick that box is that you are then uh, effectively switching the engine into encode mode. Now, it will do it as a full air engine, but you don't have to. For a, a much, much less money than an air engine, uh, you, uh, than a, a playout engine or video server, you can buy a license of air that simply works as an encoder. Uh, and now in the uh, wonderful world of SRT, uh, it's even nicer because you can buy uh, Synergy encode, feed an SDI signal in, take an SRT signal out, thank you very much. Um, and that's done by having it start immediately switch to live. Okay, so what's the live input? Well, let's go here and have a look. It's an SRT stream. We actually have SRT streams coming. Now, I've, I've force of habit, made me put the IP address in there, but it should also be noted that um, this will understand, this This does lookups. So if you happen to have an SRT stream that's coming from uh, an, uh, a proper uh, uh, site name rather than uh, a, a list of numbers, you can just um, uh, put it in there. So that I could have put in here, uh, SRT colon slash slash SRT.synergy.com colon 9000, that would have worked, but I didn't. Ah. Um, but still, so this is the input. The, that input is a playout that is coming from this uh, address. And that address is in Nuremberg. And I am talking to you from near Amsterdam. That is like 600 miles. Uh, and this is coming to me across the public internet without, a, without any kind of squelch or blur or anything at all. A beautiful, crisp, clean picture. Suddenly, you don't need satellites anymore. Suddenly, uh, contribution just got a whole bunch easier. Suddenly you can do SRT from your phone and uh, that can be fed straight into Synergy Capture, straight into Synergy Desktop, straight into Synergy Air. Uh, the broadcast has suddenly changed in unbelievable ways and it's going to be interesting to see how people pick that up and run with it. So um, that's the, here we, we've, uh, we've seen the, the um, uh, air working here. So if we move across now and have a quick look at capture, here in capture, I have uh, the same input coming in, uh, the SRT input, except um, it's, uh, uh, it's coming in for recording. So I have the, the same SRT signal coming in both to capture and to air at the same time. And I'm outputting 
from uh, Capture, I'm outputting a preview in shared RAM. So this means that when I start uh, Capture Control, um, we should, we'll have a nice smooth streaming um, uh, preview, or we should have, um, a nice smooth streaming, streaming preview that's costing us absolutely nothing uh, because the rendering has already been done by Capture uh, as Capture pulled, uh, pulled the content in. Uh, I'm just going to tuck that away for a second. Oh, there we go. So, um, so here we now we are now seeing um, there. Oh, come on! There we are. So now we can see the uh, the smooth streaming preview. Uh, be it noted, by the way, I'm running all of this stuff on a regular standard desktop works uh, workstation. Uh, this is not coming on off of a fancy server. Um, all my channels, all my effects, all my applications, all running at once, are running on the, same, the, the kind of thing that most of you will have under your desk, uh, simply because it can. Uh, so with uh, an i7 um, 3960X, that's a six core i7 of somewhat uh, older vintage, uh, together with a, a P2000 class graphics card, um, I can I can do a whole bunch of things. Um, and so if you obviously if you are installing these systems where they matter um, on the one hand uh, you're going to use better kit but on the other hand it doesn't have to be the better kit that it used to be uh, you only you, you only ever have to use five thousand dollar processors if you want to use five thousand dollar processors we get tremendous performance off of five hundred dollar processors um, and uh, so the, the the cost of entry is considerably lower than it used to be so um, here we can also see uh, um, another uh difference here which is the uh cpu uh, the the monitoring we can see how the system is running right now we can see that my cpu usage has got kind of high um but now that's because i'm running um capture air uh at root and multi viewer all at the same time on one machine and you probably wouldn't do that uh it's uh color code so gets above uh 60 it turns uh, if it's below 60 it's green gets above 60 it turns yellow and if it gets above 80 it turns red uh, so that's why i'm uh, in red here if we go back to the configurator uh, i can show you here the te telemetry entry um, i can um, specify uh, the telemetry data and get the notifications uh, sent the organization id is something that we give you uh, and then you can uh, see how your system performed uh, the event presets. Uh, yes, I do want it. There we go. Uh, event presets is there as before, so you can send your router cross points, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, um, to uh, pr from here, configure these in advance uh, and just uh, add them to your um, recordings. Here we see uh, the um, dashboard. As uh, we're not under the CPU clock, way up there in the red. Um, GPU also pretty busy, but nowhere near as bad. Um, the management database as it is as it always was. So this handles uh, um, the background, the resources that you're using, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, now that's Synergy. I'm going to close the capture. Uh, oh no, that was one more thing I wanted to. That was it. I want to go uh, the templates. If I just hit edit template for now. Um, I can bring up, uh, so from here, um, we can now, if I go to my media encoders uh, and decide to add one, um, we, we, we have a, a few others here uh, that we didn't have before. This is actually in SD, uh, so it's not showing the, us to our best advantage, but we also have at the higher end, uh, we have some additional codecs in there as well. Um, so then uh, let's have a look at the multi viewer all right so if I, i'll start off with the multi viewer configurator uh not that one the other one there we go um so the multi viewer configurator um has has the uh, added goodness now people who are familiar with it uh, will be surprised at some of the things they're about to see um um but because it's it has changed uh, uh, quite significantly i'll just pop this off for now um and so here's the multi-viewer configurator. So uh, to begin with, in the input settings, 
and we have the option of the mosaic layout as we always did or the designer layout um, and uh, if we go to the mosaic layout then we can have a look at for example what the sources are so we can now input shared ram we can input mpeg ts this used to say rtp uh, but it doesn't anymore because it's more than RTP these days. So any MPEG transport stream, RTP, UDP, or SRT comes under M M MPEG TS. NDI is visible here. Shared RAM. Webcams are also added. Um, this has been in air now for, I think, uh, two versions. Uh, this is just, uh, and, and it's also in capture. When you're setting stuff up, uh, sometimes you need a signal to get you going. Uh, being able to handle the web, webcam from Windows just is dead easy, and so that's why that's included. Uh, WDM, the Windows um, driver model, if you have a, a piece of uh, media hardware that supports WDM, you can now use it with Synergy software. You can use it hit with uh, Air, with MultiViewer, and with Capture. Uh, so um, you don't have the same control as if you're working uh, directly with hardware that we support, but it will allow you to use it. Um, uh, just don't expect us to support it uh, if it's not on our approved list. But if you have something with a WDM driver uh, and you have the possibility to try it out, give it a go. And uh, IP 2022 6-7 uh, is also now on the input list. And uh, also on the input list now uh, is uh, UHD. However, uh, I would add um, a, a word of caution here. It theoretically works. We don't know for sure because we haven't yet been able to pull together enough 8K streams to do any kind of a sensible test on it. So if you are, if you know somebody who happens to have a lot of uh, 8K streams and they want to try it out, let us know and we'll give them a license and we can see how it works. But uh, um, it is supported, but as I say, we don't know um, uh, we don't know how it would work with a bunch of 8K streams because there aren't a bunch of 8K streams yet. So that's on the input side. Then we go to the output side. Um, again, we have the uh, MPEG TS output, which we, which can be named individually. Um, so the old one is called, still called RTP output. Uh, and the reason for that is that I installed this over older versions of MultiViewer. And with, as with uh, almost all of our software, an upgrade is just that. Uh, install over, no messing around. If you're going from an ancient version to a new version, could be a bit more ticklish. But if you're going one or two versions, just install the new one and it will take over the, the all the configuration of the old one just as a matter of course and that's what it did here so when it took over my old one it was still called RTP but for the new one it's called MPEG TS uh, but it does exactly the same thing uh, broadcast mode is unicast because it's SRT and here's my SRT setup I'm outputting um, 720p uh, windows and I'm outputting two different ones if we look here um, in the center of the screen now, you will see under the word unicast, you will see 0000, 0, 0, 0 colon 9011. That's one of my outputs. 9017 is another one of my outputs. And I actually have the 9011 output is also going out to display. So that means that um, I have two different outputs going uh, from the same multi viewer. And uh, that it looks like this. So these are my SRT inputs. These are um, all grouped together so that we can be sure of what they are. Uh, this is uh, player. So player one is the same input uh, that we were um, we've been looking at for air and capture. Uh, player three is an SRT output from one of my air engines. Um, in fact, it's the uh, it's the preview output from one of my air engines as an SRT stream. Next to it, player four um, is the um, preview from air. If I pop Synergy Air back up, you'll see that we are looking at the preview stream from uh, this particular air instance. Uh, and here it is again. Um, so you can have your preview next up visible uh, in your multi viewer uh, without having to use air control to do it. And now, if I pull up this one, here we can see the shared RAM inputs. Here, also, if you look again in the center of the screen, you will see the little green ready button. 
uh, this little green ready button is showing you that Synergy Capture is ready to record because this is the preview from Synergy Capture. So we can see um, the uh, the two uh, pieces of video here side by side. Uh, one of them is the direct input and the other one is the shared RAM output. And there's clearly there's absolutely no difference between them because they're they're the same video. Um, so so here we can see from one single multi viewer instance we have two uh, outputs, two layouts um, coming out. Now I'll just check the status of my machine. Oh my word, 98%. So that's about as far as we're going to be able to uh, to take it. But I still have one more thing to show, and that is Synergy Root. Root is here. Um, and I'm, this is our Synergy Root Manager. So here I can see uh, I have uh, input, in, incoming streams uh, in 1080i, 720p. I have RTP. These are multiplexes um, that I have. Uh, and here we have a, a cam blah, 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 satellite capture loops, which I'm playing out as RTP streams. And here I have my SRT inputs. So, uh, one of these SRT inputs uh, will be uh, very familiar if I play it because we've been watching it all along. Yes, it's our trusty input from Nuremberg. Um, but we also have uh, another one just underneath that, uh, and that is Nuremberg 2. And if I play that one, then uh, we are seeing a, uh, a multi viewer again. Um, and this multi viewer has something interesting. Uh, again, it's showing the um, preview from the playout on one screen and the playout on the other. It's warning that they've got the level turned up way too high. Um, and then underneath the audio clipping, this is live German television right now. This is the commercial break uh, in the German evening programming that we're watching. Uh, and then next to that, the other still image that you can see, the side of the chap's head, um, this is our SRT input. Uh, very often that input has been camera inputs uh, because we use, um, we can send camera inputs straight in. And so we used to have the stunt that we would send our camera inputs uh, to that multi viewer wherever we happen to be. It caused great amusement uh, when I was in at Broadcast Asia last autumn, uh, sorry, Broadcast India last autumn, because we were having chaps walking up onto the stand in, in Mumbai. Uh, and we, I would hold my phone up and, and you know, take video of them and I would point and say, right, you are, you are now in Nuremberg. And they would be uh, suit suitably amazed. So, um, that the flexibility flexibility of SRT and that flexibility is reflected in uh, in Synergy Root. So from here, I can take any signal that I want and I can move it to anywhere uh, that I, I want to have. This is the manager that you set all the routes up with. Uh, and then in here we have the uh, control. Uh, I pressed the wrong button in my there we go, I think. Uh, so here we have Synergy Root Control, and this is the thing that will actually move the um, uh, thing there. Uh, this is the thing that will actually move the signals around. Root Control is what you use to send an, uh, an, uh, a piece of uh, content from one place to another. So just connect to the server, and then here is your here are your destinations. This is from an earlier demo, it's not set up right now, uh, but um, you can have all of your uh, destinations in MultiViewer op openly configurable and then drag and fill from here, just drag and drop um, to change an input and uh, it's as simple as doing this. Do I want to do that? Yes I do and that input has been changed. So I can go down here now and I can see it. Um, Whereas I, I can change it again, yes. And now it's changed. So I'll go back and play it again. And now we can see the different signal that's in there. So, um, uh, so um, that's, uh, this is how we will all be monitor, how we will all be handling our signals in the future, because they will all be SRT and they will all be coming through Synergy Route. 
And so, and with that, uh, we've reached the end of, uh, of the uh, presentation. Unfortunately, for some reason, I'm not getting any...